Good evening and you're very welcome to tonight's edition of Business and Enterprise Show here on CanonTV.com. My guest this evening is Robert Fegan of Lakeland Automation and not only is that enough for him, he's also of Lakeland Alarms and Security, both companies which you're going to find out a little more of during the program. Robert, you're very welcome. Good evening, Robert. We, we, as I said, two companies you have, Lakeland Automation and Lakeland Alarm and Security. We'll start on them in a few minutes, but we'll start, as we always do, with uh, Robert Fagan. Who's he? Robert Fagan is uh, a local man. I've uh, born and reared in uh, Cavan. That's important down no, most, here. Most I'm, I'm a blow in. You're, you're a local man. <laughs> most of the time I'm local, even though I spent 17 years in, in uh, London. Uh, in the last recession, I uh, went in '82. Spent 17 years over there learning basically what I'm doing now. And uh, we came back in uh, 99 and set up a uh, Lakeland Office Automation, basically supplying and, and servicing uh, office equipment for companies uh, uh, repairing computers, printers, telephone systems, photocopiers, anything really to run the office really. And, and you said you're over in London for 17 years. Hopefully this recession will not last for the same length of well, time. I, but I doubt I'm hopefully not, but I'm not going in this one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so service and office equipment. Office equipment has changed so much. My, 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 my first real job was uh, left in Dublin in the mid-70s. Yeah. And two things that strike me from those days was we had a photocopier the size of the kitchen table which yeah. was my job to operate. He just didn't come down and photocopy you. Give it to me, them. and uh, I, I, I was authorised to go over. Yeah. I had a little key around my neck to turn it on and do your copy. And the other one was the wages department had a computer. Yes. And they didn't have a computer. They had a computer room. room. Yeah. And it, that was the size of it. Yeah. And there was these wheels turning around. I, I assume they weren't just for effect. But when you think of how things have changed now, well, it's uh, incredible how it's gone on. As you say, when, when uh, you had the photocopier half the size of a room that could probably copy at 10 pages a minute, now you have them the size of a filing cabinet that can go at 50, 60, 70 pages a minute. Mm. And uh, everything is now has been automated. Everything has gone digital now. Your computers are linked to your uh, photocopier. That's used as a printer. You can use it as, as a, a bulk scanner, so you can put all your documents into your photocopier, scan them into your servers and your computers mm. have them all on your desk it's uh it's scary to think where it's going to end and of course one of the pieces of equipment that is gone is the telex machine yes and uh one that's possibly on its way out is the fax machine because although we have a fax machine in our business yeah we do ring up a couple of customers that yeah if you can fax us the details and yeah. you kind of get young girls at the other side of the phone going a what? what's a, a fax, fax machine you put it 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 it, it well, then I think, well, what is a fax machine? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but I remember the telex machine. Um, you had two ways of doing it. One, you could type, and of course, That's uh, right. most people, apart from the well-trained, yeah. and it was usually girls. That's not, we, 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 we won't be sexist, yeah. but that was the case. Oh, usually yeah. girls were expert typers, but us fellas, we were two-finger yeah. girls. And you could be sending a telex. Yeah. And it was literally, you typed A, A came up. It came out on the other side. Or you could take your time... Mm typing it and yeah. it went on a little ribbon that's right and your ribbon would be going grand until it got caught in something yeah. and it tore off <laughs> exactly and, it had to it. and i remember um a, a company that i worked with probably maybe late 70s early 80s can't remember exactly when but they couldn't get a telex machine because it was a huge waiting yeah. list oh, yeah. and again people in modern equipment can't can kind of get their head around i like a phone and uh, you go in you get in you walk out with it in, 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 right. in, in the 70s and 80s you wanted a phone you went you had to six, order it. you had to order it and yeah. want a big long waiting list and it was exactly the same with telexes yeah and i remember i was working for a company and they had it was a shipping company and they had a lot of dealings mm. with Denmark and they had one of the first fax machines yeah but it wasn't a fax machine as we knew it yeah you put your manifest on a drum that's right and <laughs> I don't know some I looked at but it, it, it was like one of the old recordings that you used to have yeah um, I suppose in the early part of the century yeah. before even discs were invented it was some sort of it went around and I don't know how it worked yeah. but obviously it was some I and slowly but surely yeah. You got a copy of it. it. Yeah. And it probably took, I don't know, five, six minutes. Yeah, the, the first fax took about five or six minutes yeah. to send the, 
a standard A4 yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, the fax was actually invented before the telephone. And uh, when, it, when it was invented, it was, you had to actually write out in a wax sheet. And then you had this stylist that came along and actually read it. And it could take about half an hour at that time to send a page. Mm. And then when the phone became popular, people said, well, why bother with that when you can talk to someone instantly? Yeah. So the fax then died off. And it wasn't until back probably 20, 30 years ago that it's, the faxes came back, as, faxes, as we know them. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and yeah. now they're taking the pass. Yeah, e e it. everything emails, is email. Emails, emails uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like when you think about it, um, the amount of office equipment that you had yeah. uh, 20 years ago, the average kid has it in his arse pocket oh, now, yeah, in, in, in his iPhone or his smartphone yeah. or uh, what have you. That's it, that's it. When, when, uh, even when the mobile phones first came out, you had a, like a shoe box with a, a corded handle on it. Yeah, yeah. And then they reduced it down to the size of a brick. You know, now you can put it in your pocket and you can store unlimited numbers on it. You can take photographs, send your emails. You can do anything you can do on a computer now, really. Mm. So it's, uh, technology has come a long way. I suppose speaking of t technology coming a long way, one of the ones that I've come up of late is video conferencing. Yes. How, yeah. how does that work? Basically, it works over your, your broadband. You have like a, a, a camera and microphones on your desk. You can dial out through your phone system over the broadband with voice over IP now. You can, you can you basically use your broadband for a lot of stuff. So at the other end, they'll have similar, they'll have a screen up. They'll also have a camera so they can see you, you can see them. You can all sit around the table and talk. Um, normally now, in, uh, some uh, big companies I would have those in the, in the boardroom. So if they're having board meetings, if they've got different branches, they can all sit around the different offices. They don't all have to converge on head office just for a meeting. And of course, with broadband being free or mm. being quite economical, or well, I won't say it's free, but it, 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 it's cost effective. It's cost effective <laughs> is the word I was looking for. Mm. Um, you can have meetings literally from all, all over the world. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, distances. The only thing the is, uh, is, what's the quality of it like? Because I was at a conference there up in Monaghan and mm -hmm. um, two people were speaking on us on Skype. Yeah. And two of them were, were, were very technological people. One, yeah. one was the founder of the uh, do uh, Dojo, Coder Dojo. Yeah. And I would imagine his equipment was fairly top yeah, notch. Yeah, and yeah. where we were, their equipment was fairly top yeah, notch. Yeah. And the other speaker was Jerry Keneally, who kind of yeah. sends kind of photo images literally all over the world. Yeah, yeah. So I would imagine the equipment was, was top notch. But it was my first time to see uh, Skype in action, apart from on, on a little laptop and kind of, you, yeah. know, you see a grainy person. Exactly. Uh, yeah. no, no matter how good your equipment is, you're still only as good as your weakest link. So if you have poor broadband, or even part of your broadband somewhere along the chain is is poor, basically everything has to slow down to that speed and that quality. So there's no point, if you, if you have a top, uh, top of the range uh, computer on each end, but a very poor broadband link, mm. your, your, com your computers can't send it at, at the speed that they're designed to send it on. So, this is this is where I get lost when it gets yeah. technological. Yeah. Uh, but if if at any stage somewhere along that connection, there's yeah. a there's a hiccup. Yeah. Everything everything is is, is the your, quality goes down. Your chain is just as strong as the weakest link. It's like you wouldn't drive a Formula One race car down or a, a dirt track. You wouldn't get the performance out of it. Unless it was stolen and done. Unless it was stolen, then, then you'd have to down, down your back roads and <laughs> yeah. what have you, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. These are these are some of the changes that you've seen in 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 office equipment yeah. itself. I'd say one of the other changes that you've seen is actually repairing. I mean, again, going back to my, to my early days, uh, yeah. you used to get technicians with their black cases yeah. coming along to fix machines. I still have my black case. Do you, <laughs> do you, do you get many calls yeah. out to repair? Uh, we, yeah, we do. The, the The main difference now we found in in uh, in service. I remember years ago when I twenty thirty years ago when I was. Uh, out with a, my black case if you had a, a problem with a photocopy even if your gear or something went in it you could ring up the manufacturer and order that gear in or it, in a lot of cases you'd have a good bit of the stock in anyway mm. but now that's all done away with it's all modules so instead of getting the gear you have to get a section of the machine but uh, it's they reckon it's cost effective to do it that way mm. even though you're paying a lot more for the whole unit than you are for one gear yeah you know so everything has been modulized and on, on the small end printers, like the home use printers, uh, manufacturers aren't making any parts for those now. 
Yeah. So if, if you buy it and it's under warranty, they'll swap it out. If mm. it's outside the warranty, you throw it away and but get another one. Again, even 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 going back to the printers, you know, you can yeah. pick up a printer for forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. You, you, yet you, and most of them take the five cartridges of ink, which costs more than the which printer. costs more than the than, than the printer. In fact, yeah. I have a going back to the fax machines. Mm. I have a fax machine. It's the mm. Philips fax machine. Yeah. And the cartridge for it is a hundred and nineteen. Plus fat. Yeah. Now, having mm -hmm. said that, mm. it lasts two to three years, yeah. but it's nearly yeah. time up now. Yeah. And um, time for a new fact. Time for and you're wondering, <laughs> well, I just get a new fax. Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, rather than kind of because you can get a new fax machine for fifty, sixty quid. That's if, right. If ink in it. And it'll come with a year's warranty. And it'll come with a year's warranty. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. like we're uh, supposed to be recycling mm. and electronic things to be recycling yet yeah, we're, we're doing the, the exact opposite to that we're, you know? we're living in a throwaway society well, we're living in a, 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 a completely throwaway yeah. in the same way with TVs now having That's said right. that I remember when I was a kid the TV and the valve would go and the, uh, the fellow yeah. would come around and yeah. he'd kind of have a look in the back mm. now um, I know we've won TV since we moved up here eight years yeah. and I know the other one we brought up with us yeah. so I don't know yeah. how old that is yeah. But we, no one has looked in the back of it. No, ever no. since. So yeah. like. But in, in fairness, our technology is a lot more reliable than it has been. I know even when we I first started doing photocopiers no. and and uh, faxes and computers. Yeah. You'd have problems every other day on on a lot of machines. Mm. But now you can put uh, machines out there, and you can almost forget about them until they're due their annual maintenance or whatever. They they are reliable. Yeah. Yeah. The quality is a lot better now than. It, it and was. from your business point of view. Uh, do you make more uh, from the actual selling of the machine or from your contract on service in them? Uh, it kind of balances out. It would depend on what machine and like on, on computers, uh, there wouldn't be that much of a markup on, on the sale of them. But computers will need ongoing uh, maintenance because with things like viruses, you know, a lot of users uh, can change things unknown to themselves and then all of a sudden they don't know why this isn't working or that's not working and we get a call mm. I can't print you know my mouse isn't working my keyboard isn't working so we'd have to you know try and talk to them over the phone on how to resolve it or go out and, and uh, sort out the problem for them and generally when you call out is it mm. something absolutely so it, it simple it used to be but in this day and age now People will do all the all the uh, simple checks themselves. Yeah. You know, normally now we wouldn't we wouldn't go out now unless it's a major fault that the average person. Because go, it goes back to my day starting off in LEP uh, when we had the computer room there. Yeah. Now everybody has a computer at home. Yeah. Um, some yeah. have several of them, right. and they're used to the kids coming down to you and saying, "This won't," and you you yeah. kind of. <laughs> do the old Microsoft solution turn it up turn it back on again. I don't know how, how it works yeah. Yeah. but it does but, but yeah. it does work it does because when you, when, you, when you restart a computer when it's starting up it mm. checks everything out itself and makes sure everything is in a certain order so if anything is out of line by restarting it in a lot of cases it can you get, can it back again. get it back up and okay so that more or less covers yeah. the uh, automation of mm -hmm. the office equipment mm -hmm. company maybe we'll take a little break now and when we come back we'll talk about your security and your uh, alarm company and uh, where we go from there I'm Gavin Duffy and I'm saying watch CavanTV.com. it's a great opportunity to see some great programs and you can watch it all around the globe via the internet and on many platforms I watch it myself great stuff
Okay, you're welcome back to uh, the Business Enterprise Show here on CavanTV.com. We are chatting to Robert Fegan of Lakelands. And the first half of the program, he was telling us about his uh, office supplies company and office equipment company. But then we're going to look at uh, how he has diversified in the last couple of years into, well, you may as well tell us. Yeah. Well, about four years ago, we, we um, diversified into uh, security and we uh, provide intruder, uh, supply intruder alarms, CCTV systems, uh, gate automation and access control. And uh, now with the, um, with the PSA have actually uh, licensed all of that. So any, anyone now who's putting cameras in or an intruder alarm or access control have to be licensed by the PSA. I know they've had uh, some uh, ads on telly there as of uh, October, because the 1st of October they brought this out. Uh, all through October they had ads on saying that there were hefty fines for anyone caught uh, using uh, non-licensed -in uh, installers. So if, uh, if I stuck a, went into Woody's and got myself a DIY mm -hmm. cam and stuck it up from my mother's house? You, well, that's, that's a grey area because yeah. we, we, we've been pointing out that to them. So they were kind of saying, well, if you buy one and put it on your own house, it's all right. Mm. But if you buy one for a business, it's not all right. Is that, okay, obviously if that's great for mm. your business and other businesses in it, but are we not going back to the old days where um, you, you, you had monopolies? Um, like we were looking for a freer market. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I suppose on, on the security side, because security can be a, a serious issue, and uh, there were a lot of cowboys out there who didn't really know what they were doing. They're kind of half putting it in. It wasn't put in properly wasn't tested to see if it was working. Now uh, you have an audit every year and uh, the uh, uh, auditing company can come down and they can say, okay, I want to have a look at two of your jobs and they'll pick what jobs they want to come out. They'll test the job, make sure they're done right. And if they're not done up to a certain uh, standard, then uh, obviously you have, uh, uh, your license could be uh, revoked. Did your license cost much? It costs uh, roughly about, just over 2,000 a year. 2,000 a year. Yeah, now, yeah. You're, you're a reasonably large size company. Mm. If I was to start up mm. tomorrow as a one-man yeah. security company, yeah. would it be the same? Yeah, it's, just, it's the same on, unless, you, unless your uh, turnover is, is uh, in the millions. Mm. So until you've, you have a good range before, uh, before yeah. your, your price changes. So does that make it difficult for um, new businesses to start up? Like um, all business, I, yeah, I, again, yeah. if we if we go back to when you started Lakelands, yeah. you were probably like myself. You had a few bits and pieces in the back of the van. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had uh, the house phone routed to the mobile, That's and away it. you went. That's it. Yeah, mm. um, it, it's uh, yes, it is. It is making it difficult for young people starting out in it, but uh, once once you get rolling, it will take a time. But once once it gets rolling and you start to get a, a few clients behind you and get your, your name out there, it will eventually pay off. Mm. Yeah, it will eventually pay off. And that's 2,000 every year, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, you'd, you'd, yeah. you'd want to be made doing quite a big, reasonable yeah, turnover it, for, okay, you'll get your wages out of it, but for your profit, it'll be, or, it'll yeah, be a fair it, dent into it. There would be a fair dent into it, all right. You, you, you're talking a numbers game, really. You have, you have to have a good few... Uh, jobs behind you really before you and start, is uh, is is the security companies in general happy with that coming out? I would say in general, no, no one, no one likes paying out license fees for anything. Like, I know no one likes, <laughs> likes paying license fees, yeah. but the fact that it keeps it, it, it keeps business in in a smaller group. It's uh, yes, it would keep business in in a smaller group. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, then anyone who is doing it is qualified to do it. They're trained to do it. And in, for, for say, for instance, you wanted to put an alarm in your house, you'd know once you use a, a license mm. installer, it's going to be done right. It's going to be up to standards. You know, if mm. if, if uh, the uh, uh, authorities come down and, and inspect yours, you know it's going to be up to the standards. But the last thing someone in, in the business wants is to go out and put in a, a system that's not in right and then have to go back and rectify everything afterwards. You're not going to make money doing that. That's true, and I, and I suppose apart from anything, it'll put the cost of the, of the end product up to the, the consumer. Right, Naturally, because it's a business cost. Yeah, yeah. Now, would does that cover 
everything that you do, you install gates, you put up cameras, you do alarm systems, or have you to go and get a separate license for each one of them? No, the, you, the one license will do them all. But you, at the moment, you don't have to have a license for the gates. But they're talking about it. Hmm. Um, gates, that, that's <laughs> kind of a... I, 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 yeah. I, I, I go canvassing now whenever yeah. there's an election coming up. That's about the only time I'm actually yeah. walking around and seeing <laughs> things. Yeah. And the amount of gates that certainly had cropped up yeah. in the last couple of years, and I know locals, yeah. um, people who were born and bred with St. Baber who are Trump, when they see yeah. the gates, the first thing they say, well, that's a feckin' dub coming in. So let me say here and there, I don't, yeah. have, I don't have gates in my yeah. house. But they were nearly a status symbol. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were. Uh, because you had these uh, fantastic wrought iron gates, right. beautiful uh, Big pillars, the whole yeah. lot, yeah. and then the this the wooden fence with the uh, hedging right. around the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. so it wasn't really a security yeah. issue. No, you know? no, it's not really. It's not really a security issue because uh, if anyone wants into your garden, I'm sure there's more ways than using the gate. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. um, but expensive too. Yeah, they can be. So in his heyday, everybody had to have a set. Have the gates dropped off now, or is it because of the fact that they were all worried about our home security? The, the gates have kind of dropped off a bit, but the intruder alarms have gone up a bit, you know, mm. which is probably a sign of the times we're in, really. And would you do the whole package? Would you Could you uh, set somebody up with an alarm, a CCT camera that yeah. could pick everything up, and gates to... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can have, uh, have it all... Uh, integrated together it can all be connected to your mobile phone so you can control your alarm from your mobile phone you can view your cameras from the mobile phone you can open and close your gates from your mobile phone check on the wife in the mobile you phone can check on the wife. Or, or, or even worse look at your mobile phone and watch your house being robbed yeah <laughs> but by that time your alarm should have told you you're being robbed yeah um all these security issues, and now I, 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 I know we're kind of in, in, in rural parts, and I know I, I, I'm in the middle of nowhere outside Baylor, and I even see people who are even more isolated than that. Yeah. Um, has that because of, we say, Garda stations being closed, people are feeling very insecure, and, all, and you know, you read papers, you look it up, and you uh, you say, look, well, I want to do something. Um, is that why people may be kind of running to companies I, I, like yourselves? I would say there, there aren't people out there who, who are targeting rural houses. And, and they're we, not alarm installers. And, no, they're not alarm And going around the next day, say, well, look, if you get one of our alarms, it <laughs> yeah, won't happen again. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But what we find is that they're actually uh, targeting areas. So when we go out to... to, mm. uh, to uh, advise someone on an alarm in a lot of cases it's after they've been burgled and mm. you find that a lot of the neighbors have actually been burgled as well yeah so seemingly when the, when the criminals come they target a whole area and do that and then they move off and do another area I, I, we, we had a, um, a text alert uh, meeting there in, in bail a couple of months ago mm. one of the guards was up speaking and because uh, i was glad when he said it but he said the best deterrent is actually a couple of dogs yeah and uh, I said that's grand yeah. because we have a couple of dogs. Uh, make sure they're not too yeah. well fed. I'm sorry, the prefer lads. Yeah. They haven't been fed too well ever <laughs> since. I'm keeping them, keep it, keeping them hungry. I, I know a few places where the dogs were stolen. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, you can't win. You can't win. Um, and it's obviously expensive to get an alarm and cameras in today. However, if you were burgled tomorrow, exactly, suddenly. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't seem that very expensive. reasonable, yeah, yeah. 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 But in, in a lot of cases, you, you could do it one or the other. It's, it, it's a kind of belt and braces getting the, the cameras and the uh, alarm. But uh, obviously, different premises differ. So, yeah, you may have some premises where mm -hmm. you may need cameras if you have a lot of equipment outside. Yeah. But uh, if, if most of the valuables are inside, if you've just got, a, say, a house with a garden, nothing in the garden, then an alarm on the house is yeah. it's all you need. Ballpark. For your average detached house, mm -hmm. what sort of price are we looking at? You can be looking anything from five hundred euro to two thousand euro, depending on what you want, what size of a house you have, uh, how well you want to protect it. You could have sensors in every room. You could just have them on the windows. Mm. It depends really. There's, there's no two houses. What would be the most set, most uh, n necessary pieces of equipment? Necessary, I would say probably the the intruder alarm. Once you have an, an intruder alarm and have it either monitored to a monitoring station or to your mobile phone. Because if you're living out in the country and your alarm goes off and no one hears it or no one knows about it, 
It's pointless, mm. really. And would you need wi- them under Windows, the sensors under Windows, or would your PIO in the room pick up everything? It, normally, if you have a room with three or four windows, it'd be cheaper for the PIR in the room that would get, get all the uh, motion in the room. Yeah. But uh, at that stage, they've had to either break your window or get in through your window before it activates. Now, you mentioned uh, the monitoring stations. I assume that, the, that uh, I suppose the best one known is um, uh, Phone Watch, Aircom. Yeah. They, they just yeah. advertise so much. Yeah. I assume there are more monitoring stations than oh, yeah, this Aircom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's about 20 different monitoring stations out there. And are they also licensed at the PSA? Yes. Just, they yeah, are. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, I assume that is the way to go and not just have... Uh, that that would that would be a lot a lot of people would go that way. Yeah, because I know when I lived in Dublin, yeah. an alarm could be going next door, yeah. and you just walk on by. Yeah, I have noticed down the country, mm. uh, perhaps it's, uh, people look out for the neighbour a bit m- much more, or perhaps it's just nosy. Um, but <laughs> if an alarm going off, they will tend to take yeah. take notice. Yeah. If there's a strange car, they will tend to take That's notice. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, they do, they do. Because that's not a very good selling point, <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, now you also, uh, in fact, we 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 had the boss of it here earlier, or not earlier, earlier in the month, um, Paul Laird of BNI. You're actually a member of BNI. Yes, I am. Um, have you found it beneficial for your business? Uh, yes, it, it's um, if nothing else, it gets it gets uh, the company name out there. Uh, even though we've been in business here now for over thirteen years, it's uh, still amazing how many people don't. Uh, or didn't know about us. Mm. So uh, even by joining the BNI, you meet different people, different uh, businessmen in the in the area, and uh, by getting talking to them, you know you're kind of in a, in a network, and uh, you can get you get a, a quite a bit of business through that as well. Fam it. That's fantastic. Uh, you certainly have a great future ahead of it. You have the two businesses, the, uh, two forks. So obviously, when one is down, one is up. And as I said, you'll like be getting them up. Like to keep the two of them up. You're, now you're getting greedy. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you're getting the referrals from mm. BNI. So the future is rosy for Lakeland. It's looking good. Robert, appreciate your time. Thank you. So that's it for tonight's program. Uh, do uh, stay listening or even watching. Uh, next week, being Budget Day, we'll have a special where we'll analyse uh, the budget, how it will affect businesses and other communities. So do watch us next week on the Business and Enterprise Program with myself, Colin Colgan, here on Cavan TV. Till we meet again, good luck, have a great week and goodbye.